In the verses on respect that we chant often, the Buddha mentions respect for the triple training, which is training in heightened virtue, heightened mind, which is concentration, and heightened discernment. But he also mentions respect for concentration. It's as if he's wanting to make sure you know, you're doubly sure, that concentration is important. Maybe he foresaw that in later centuries people would try to drop concentration from the path. I saw one person write one time that basically the Buddha taught two paths. There was a sevenfold path and a sixfold path. The sevenfold path dropped mindfulness. The sixfold path dropped right effort and right concentration. And in the commentaries, they talk about the dry insight arahant, who doesn't get any of the jhanas, which is basically the definition of right concentration. So maybe the Buddha foresaw this. He stressed the importance. You really do want to get the mind into concentration because it's an important part of the path. It's your food on the path. It's your foundation. If you're going to see the mind clearly, you have to see it when it's still. Or as the Buddha used another term, when it's your mindfulness is immersed in the body. You're fully right here. So we respect concentration, one, by respecting it in theory, reminding ourselves that it's something we've got to do. And while you're doing it, you want to give yourself to it fully. Don't hold anything back. Immerse yourself in your object. Here we're working with the breath. And when we say, focus on the breath, it's an unfortunate image. It gives the impression that your mind is like a camera, and you're going to focus the lens in the camera on something that's outside of the camera. It'd be better to say, wear the breath. Put it on, wear it. Think of it being all around. And you want to develop an all around awareness as well. So you don't hold anything back. If you hold anything back, you're off to the side. Be in the middle. Because when you hold things back, there are big blind spots in the mind. Those blind spots are ignorance, and it's precisely because of the ignorance that we suffer. So when you begin to settle down and the breath begins to feel good, allow yourself to plunge into the body. Put the breath on. Wear it. Remember that image of the man with the white cloth surrounding his body? You want your awareness to be all around like that. And then allow it to stay there. That's another aspect of respect for concentration. All too many people, when they get the mind to settle down a little bit, say, okay, what's next? When do the insights come? And so what I said, stay with it. Indulge in it. Settle in. And the first defilements that you're going to be dealing with are the ones that try to get you out of concentration. They're to give you reasons for moving on. They sound like Dharma. After all, we know that concentration is not the goal. And they can talk you into thinking that you've got to be really quick and in a hurry to get the insights. After all, that's heedfulness, right? But this is meticulous work. And one of the lessons of concentration is you can't believe everything you think. even the lessons of Dharma that tell you you've got to move on. You've got to bring other lessons of Dharma that say, no, we've got to respect the concentration. Give it some space. Give it some time. And question those other voices. And as you question them, you have to 
gain some insight into how the mind works. How do these voices come? How do they gather? How do they get articulate? How do they have a message? And who are they talking to? As you breathe through these things, you begin to see how there's a little stirring in the breath energy. And then the mind slaps a label on it, either as a physical sensation or as the seed of a thought. And then you, if you decide it's going to be a thought, then you nurture it and slap a few more labels on. And then you ride with it. So as you say no to these voices and resist their message, you're going to start seeing the workings of the mind, which is precisely what we're here for. This is one of the ways in which concentration gives rise to discernment. Now, it may not be in terms of what you've heard about what discernment should be, the three characteristics or dependent core rising. It's actually in those teachings, but you don't have to keep those teachings in mind. Just notice, where is there a disturbance and what can you do to undercut the disturbance? And you're doing the work of insight. So you respect concentration in theory, and then you respect it in practice, and then you respect it in protecting it. As you're trying to develop this all-around gaze, that was one of the epithets of the Buddha, the all-around eye, and a peculiar meaning in Indian culture. They had the belief that if a deva saw you, you were blessed. And if you happen to see a deva, if you saw any part of a deva's body, the deva's body was all eye. In other words, you saw the hand, you saw the foot, even that would be enough. You could rest assured that the deva had seen you. And so on the one hand, when they said that the Buddha was an all-around eye, they were saying that he had the same power as a deva. But what's more of just to us is the idea that you want your awareness to be all around. You want so that anything comes up in the mind, which used to hide in the shadows, used to hide behind the, behind the screens that the mind puts up, is now clear. You see it for what it is. no matter which direction it comes from. So don't hold anything back. Don't be the camera off to the side taking a picture of the breath. Get into the breath. Immerse yourself in the body. Try to get this awareness that's all around. And then you understand why the Buddha was so insistent that we have respect for concentration, because it can do so much for us.